Today we're going to talk about the electrical systems on the uh, RV and on in this particular case the E-Pro and Geo-Pro lines of campers. Uh, there's basically two different two or three different systems within the electrical system and we're going to get over those right now. The primary system is that you take this cord that comes with your camper and you plug it in you plug it in here on the back side or the on the sides here where you have this hook up here and you plug it into a post at the campground that that handles 30 amp a 115 amp or a 50 amp depending on what you you have at your, there and sometimes you'll have all three the important thing to remember that is as with your house your, everything in your house is run on AC alternate current and it's 115 or 220 amp I mean 20 220 volt so the only difference in your your RV is that you have this type of system with your plugs in here but everything else is designed to run off a 12 volt and I'll explain that a little bit more like right now I'm not hooked up to anything electrically but I still have my batteries so I can go up here on the control panel and I, I can turn on the uh, interior lights and they run off the battery and that's why RV makers a long time ago figured that they wanted to run everything inside here on the 12 volt system that way they can run off the battery the, the exception to that is your microwave and your air conditioner and your plugs that are actually in here so we're gonna what happens is when you plug that in you plug your cord in you're powering up this system right here and this is your converter box and what this converter box does is takes in that power and it it sends out through breakers it sends out to those components that run off the 115 or the regular household current your microwave and your air conditioner and then it also converts the power to from AC to DC 12 volt and it powers up all the other components within your camper your lights everything else that runs off 12 volt and so, that's, so what you'll hear is you'll hear this fan kick in the end sometimes whenever it gets a good little load on it that fan will kick in and it'll run it's like a uh, different speeds on that variable speed fan and you'll hear that fan kick in and out as it's converting that into 12 volt now on the Geo Pro and E Pro the system is primarily a 30 amp system and this is the kind of plug you'll have for that 30 amp system it's prong like this and so you have different options if you don't have this hookup you have different options you go into your box and you you have a strange looking plug kind of like this that you got to plug into well then you can get this adapter this is a 50 amp to 30 amp adapter now what that's going to do is you'll still have the access to the 50 amp setup but you'll be able to plug in your 30 amp on this side so that doesn't change a whole lot you have plenty of juice to power that up that's one way to do that now the next thing you have is you have this set up here now this one is more if you just need power outside using your box you're actually using your 30 amp box this is a 30 amp hookup that you plug into the 30 amp and it gives you your traditional plug that you're thinking of right here this is if you're using that 50 amp or something on the other one and you're, you need to have an extension cord plugged into that so that's what this adapter is for now on this one here this is an adapter that allows you to go from your 30 amp plug here plugged into here and you can use an extension cord and run off of the, the normal 115 circuit and uh, which is usually a 15 amp that's, a, that's your normal 110 circuit and that allows you to use a normal standard plug to power your system now this is going to underpower because this is not going to be the same power you're going from a 15 amp probably circuit breaker to a, to a 30 amp setup so you're not going to be able to use everything in your camper if you've got a heavy extension cord a 12 gauge or less it's actually 12 or 10 is your better 10 is even a higher gauge 
extension cord and you have a, at least a 15 amp you probably can run your air conditioner off of that so if you've got a hookup like that you can run your air conditioner but you may not want to run your air conditioner and your microwave at the same time or vice versa so that's another way of hooking up so another thing you want to invest in is the surge guard here these aren't too cheap 30 amp ones are about $75 and this one here is set up to, it basically checks out your circuit. You have a, a meter here and you want all green lights across here. And it tells you different things strong if you, as you're plugging this up. I actually have had this save me basically once. I plugged in and I've got a reverse polarity, which could have torn my system up. So I end up moving to another campsite because of that. So this is something that, that you want to purchase just to protect your electrical system. So with that system hooked up with your cord and you're running your normal power through your converter box and running all your 12 volt setup and all that everything should work inside of here now what you don't want to do you don't need to have your uh, inverter on and we'll get to that in a little bit but here's your inverter if you're running in that particular setup your inverter needs to be turned off it's not really doing anything and we'll get to how when when to use that but that's normally if you're hooking up like that that's all you need to do is you basically are running off that system and it'll convert to your 12 volt or whatever you need to do so we're going to move on to the other type of system we actually have within the camper so the other kind of system we have within the camper is we have the 12 volt system and you'll either have one or two batteries you could have different types you could have lithium you could have uh, amgs you can have in my case this is the flooded batteries and uh, that will give you your 12 volt system and we'll explain to you about the, how that system works. So when you're using the 12 volt system and also any other time pretty much if you're using your camper there's a key behind your tongue it's actually on the other side here and it's different looks different in different models mine some looks like a key that's what mine actually looks like is a key up in there you'll see and you make sure that is a that's your cutoff if you don't want any juice being drained from your battery while you're traveling or if you're sitting in the driveway for a while or in storage you want to turn that key off but that's you'll make sure that key is on so with the 12 volt system you can use just about everything in your camper the, with the exception of your we don't have this is to say that we're hooked up to the site now we're in a primitive site we don't have an electrical box there and we're just running off the battery so if you're doing that you can't run your microwave you cannot run your air conditioner so what you do is you have a control panel here and you can run just about most of the stuff on here you can't run your electric water heater you can run it in a gas you can run your water pump you can take your awning out you can use any of your lights any of your gauges here will work and everything within here will work except for again microwave air conditioner and your normal standard plugs will not work now a lot of people ask when do you use the inverter well in most cases the inverter really eats up a lot of energy so you want to be very sparing about when you use the inverter now what the inverter does is it takes your battery power and the, mine's over here my switch and you have to push and hold it in to get it to fire up um, and it's in different places in different different one of the campers so you'll have to look for see where you, where you have that type of switch set up at and so what that does is once you power that up now you have a thousand watts and it is actually going to power up these plugs any of the plugs within your camper the one in the bathroom it's going to power up all those plugs with the exception is your microwave is over a thousand watts so it won't run and again your air conditioner won't run now exactly when will you use that inverter is up to you but you have to decide what your what your needs are in my case the only thing I even have that will run off of that that I can run it's under a thousand watts I have a toaster if I want to toast some pieces of bread in the toaster I can plug that in turn on my inverter and run it off the battery some people might have have a, a curling iron or a hair dryer that runs under a thousand watts 
if you have something like that and you want to use it for that particular thing you can do that same thing with a coffee pot most coffee pots are over a thousand watts but there are some that you can get that are under so you might want to turn that inverter on cook your coffee and then shut it back off again so that's the only time you're going to use that inverter you don't want to leave it on all the time because if you do it's going to run that battery even when it's not plugged in it's going to lose some power over time now without getting into too much of the details about there's systems within your geo pro and e pro that allow you to keep that battery topped off as best you can and the systems we have which are nice uh, normally at the very least you usually have a thousand watt uh, panel on top of your roof and now I think they're going with 190 watt it runs through this converter and uh, basically that keeps your batteries charged it keeps them charged as best it can depending on how big and you also have the on the side where you can plug in one on the back or actually in the front and you can move a panel around there so that that system's just there to keep that battery topped off if you're using that battery and that battery exclusively now there's some alternate ways that you can go differently with if you want to maintain a lot of that stuff if you don't have a hookup at a campground and you still want to have that air conditioner running and you can go with a pretty heavy duty generator like this but they are loud this one here actually has a 30 amp hookup plug on there you plug into that you're going to be able to run you got to watch your watt voltage on there and like i say this one here would be large enough to handle that but it's also very noisy and uh you can go with the smaller generator but the smaller generators will only power those uh those uh normal plugs inside your camper and it'll, you'll have a little trouble with the air conditioner powered up so just something to keep in mind and a lot of expense involved and some places allow a generator some places don't allow a generator so you just got to be careful with what you want to do with that if you ever have trouble with some of your electrical system this here if you push on this this button here you'll open this up and you'll see you have circuit breakers and again this is for your AC coming from the electrical box if you're hooked to a campground these are your circuit breakers this is your 12 volt system all over here so you may want to get a few extra fuses and carry those around with you and you'll have to check these if you have problems another thing that you might want to worry about is is the electrical the circuit breaker on your on your outside of your pole where you plug in is it hooked up or not uh, properly and make sure those circuit breakers are turned on as well because when you plug them in sometimes they're, you want them turned off when you plug them in Make sure you turn them off as or turn them on as you need them another thing you want to do is your inverter sometimes somehow if it gets overloaded it, you go down inside and you'll see i'll have a picture here where you can go inside and there's a reset button that you might have to reset if that ever gets overloaded and that may cause your system not to work and another one is the you want to find where your gfi circuit is it's in different places on mine it's this one here by the kitchen sometimes it's, the, it's on the one in here there's a master that runs all your plugs you want to make sure that that's reset sometimes that'll get popped and then you won't be able to get power so that's another thing to do for troubleshooting so in conclusion there's a lot of ways to get power to your rv and uh be that your normal power cord or using your batteries and I hope this clarifies and shows you a little bit more maybe what's something you didn't know about your electrical system in your RV so that's about all I have and uh, we'll see you again on another one of these videos